Welcome to Art Speak Collective, an art event series founded in response to the ongoing catastrophes we call 2020. Art Speak is a play on words. Art speaks, it has a voice. As a nation, our United States are not. In times of crisis, artists can be thought of as second responders, holding a mirror to the world we all share and offering hope for change and healing. The arts, be they visual, music, dance, poetry, theater, or literature, show us what is possible. We're called upon to think, feel, join, take action. Today's program offers you a look at various art forms we've gathered to help us express our conviction that there's never been a more important opportunity to make your voice heard. Vote. My name is Michelle Cave, and I am the founder of Ballet and Beyond NYC. Our mission is to change the lives of New York City kids who have a passion for dance. My training is in classical ballet, so my original intent was to provide ballet and modern dance training to children who could not attend professional schools. The way in which I learned ballet was always a dictatorial proposition, teacher to student. Over time, however, we've worked to make our training more interactive, still teaching the classical technique, but asking our students to incorporate their artistry right from the beginning and to understand that technique is primarily a means for their own expression, their own voice. The first piece is set to Caged Bird by Maya Angelou, which is about seeding freedom. It is accompanied by a live drummer. The two young dancers built the choreography themselves with the guidance of their teacher, Nicole Kadar. I can't overemphasize how in both this piece and the ballet piece that will follow, the students assumed so much responsibility for creativity, for rehearsal, and for filming the final product. Caged Bird by Maya Angelou. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the current ends and dips his wing in the orange sun rays and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his narrow cage can seldom see through his bars of rage. His wings are clipped. His feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful trill of things unknown but longed for still. His tune is heard on the distant hill, for the cage bird sings of freedom. My name is Brittany Vogel, and I'm a visual artist based in Hoboken, New Jersey. My work focuses on expressive painting and drawing, and in my series called Powerful Women, I combine the two techniques. My drawing concentrates on the beauty of the line. It is simple, yet powerful.
Hello, my name is Rakaya Aikens, and I attend Central High School. I wrote the short poem, When a Son is Buried Before His Mother. When a mother has a son, she does everything in her power to make sure he grows into a man. She becomes the son he basks in and that warms him with adoration and love. It took only the single pull of a trigger to cause him to wither away before he even had a chance to bloom into a flower. When a son is buried before his mother, he becomes a target once again, even after death. Instead of his name, they call him criminal. Instead of his name, they call him thug. Instead of his name, they call him felon. Destroying a flower is justified when you call it a weed. Killing a man is justified when you call him a monster. When a mother buries her son, instead of his name, she calls him an angel, pure and sweet. Because we like to believe only angels deserve to live. But what the mother doesn't know is that it shouldn't matter if he was a criminal, a thug, or a felon. Those are not his name. It shouldn't matter if he was a son of someone, the brother of one, and the father of another. Because regardless of all these things, he was a man that deserved to live. A mother's worst fear is to bury her son, and now she thinks she has to remind the world that her little boy deserved the chance to bloom into a flower, and she will never get to kiss her little boy again. The mother tells her son love to sing as almost as much as he loved her, and all he dreamed of doing was touching the stars. The mother tells the story of when she taught her son how to ride his first bike. She told him, you must learn how to balance yourself now because life isn't an easy ride. She reminded him to never be afraid to take the risk. She told him that the entire universe rested in his little hands. So never be afraid to seize the world because you think it's too heavy. And never let them stars you love so much slip from your fingertips. And for a moment, he was human. For a moment, someone recalled his name. Thank you for listening. A Letter in My Purse by Shema El Sabah. I am not sure. Truly, she was nothing more than just a purse. But when lost, there was a problem. How to face the world without her. Especially because the streets remember us together. The shops know her more than me because she is the one who pays. She knows the smell of my sweat. She loves it. She knows the different buses and has her own relationship with their drivers. She memorizes the ticket price and always has the exact change. Once, I bought a perfume she didn't like. She spilled all of it and refused to let me use it. By the way, she also loves my family, and she always carries a picture of everyone she loved. What might she be feeling right now? Maybe scared or disgusted from the sweat of someone she doesn't know? Annoyed by the new streets? If she stopped by one of the stores we visited together, would she like the same items? Anyway, she has the house keys, and I am waiting for her. Edgy, epigraph by John Muir. When one tugs at a single thing in nature, he finds it attached to the rest of the world.
hordes of yous, me's, lurching, there a precipice, a river, a natural span. Bed down, it's late. Precipice already full, homes with ocean views, make it hard to find a decent cliff to jump from. Where to? Rivers used to be lazy, now dried up or overflowed their ferny banks. Check that one off, unless willing to chance drowning. Scratching, fuddled, where we stand, waiting, there's still the bridge. Oh, appears to have suffered a collapse, washed away, over and out. The water seemed calm. Must have been a previous storm. Make a run for it. I mean the bed. Ignore the sheets. Leave them be. Won't need them where we're going. Jump up and down with joy on that comfy sack. Berserk as when we were children, believing every toy would, should, could be ours. Hi, my name is Vincent Bush. I'm a mixed media artist. I create art that's all about love. I believe the heart is a universe sign for love and no matter what culture, religion, color, or walk of life you belong to, you can recognize that symbol and what it stands for. Uh, so as a result, I am motivated to create heart designs so that I can continue to remind people about this key ingredient in life. The second piece is a ballet solo variation from Sleeping Beauty, but we reinterpreted the story and particularly the concept of the fairy godmothers so that the students could express the qualities they deem most important for their lives. The four values they identified as gifts that they would want to have for life were honesty, joy, justice, and tenacity. This became the fairy of tenacity and is interpreted by our performer, Nora.
Mary Fields and Mary Dimery, two strong women from the 19th century, were born during the last days of enslavement, and each went on to make a difference in the world as free women. Stagecoach Mary, Mary Fields, became the first African-American mail carrier in the West, riding in men's clothing with two rifles across her lap. Mary Dimery, Kimberly's great-grandmother, lived at a time when African-American men could vote but were subject to severe forms of voter suppression, often including murder. Today, Mary lives on as the matriarch of a diverse family of accomplished doctors, lawyers, and artists.